All right, they want us to find the domain and range and interval notation of this rational function. The best thing to do is really just to take, make a quick sketch of this, and that will help you find the domain and range. And in order to do that, I first have to factor. Go back and watch the videos on graphing rational functions if you don't remember this, but I'm going to factor this into negative 6 and positive 1, and I'll factor this into probably plus, oops, minus 2, not plus 2. It's going to be um, minus 2 and minus 1. So notice nothing cancels out. Usually something will cancel out, but in this case it doesn't. So that helps me find my, um, if you're graphing this, that would have helped you to find your uh, intercepts. Did I, did I factor that right? Let me just make sure. Negative. It's three, negative three, negative two. No, that's right. <laughs> then I did mine wrong. Um, unless the signs that are, no, this, yeah, because look at the plus six right here. Mm -hmm. so, oh my gosh, no, I'm, I'm wrong. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, something doesn't seem right. Usually something cancels out. My yeah. fault. Thank you for catching that. It's negative. Because that's a negative, I thought that was a... I mean, because that's a positive, I thought that was a negative. Yeah. That's going to be negative 3 and negative 2. So now something does cancel out. So let me change that. X minus 3, X minus 2. Those cancel out, which means you have a hole at negative 2. But that doesn't mean that... I'm sorry, I had two. That doesn't mean that um, that can't be part of the range. So let's draw our graph. So this really equals x minus 1 over x minus 3. But you have a hole at 2 comma, plug in 2 here and here, and you get 1 over negative 1, negative 1. 2 comma negative 1, there's a hole. And um, there's a vertical asymptote right there at 3. So there's a vertical asymptote, and the horizontal asymptote, since the degree of the top and bottom are the same, the vertical asymptote is at, the, at 1, the ratio of leading coefficients. And so you can see what's going to happen. We, you can also graph your x-intercept, which is going to be positive 1. So there's your x-intercept, and you know now, and your y-intercept is going to be um, one third. So this is what your graph is doing, like that. And then it's also going to do that over there. So now that you've graphed it, you can see. Now there's, you could have done this all analytically instead of graphically. You could have done that probably, but in my opinion, it's easier just to graph it and make sure you know what it's doing and then to name the domain and range. So you can see the domain are all the x values that you're allowed to have. And the domain is everything but... Domain is all but negative 2, I'm sorry, positive 2 and positive 3. So we have to write that in interval notation. That would be from negative infinity to 2 union, from 2 to 3 union, from 3 to infinity, like that. Mm. Okay? The range is going this way, if I scan, let me change colors here, if I scan like this, where where do I not touch the graph? Negative 1 and 1. You, you don't touch it here at negative 1, and you don't touch it here at positive 1. So the range, let me write this in a color you can see, the range is going to be from negative infinity, that's down at the bottom, coming up, to negative 1, union, from negative 1 to 1, union from 1 to infinity. Yep. And those are your two answers for domain and range.